Okay, let's get moving. Hello, and welcome to ePortfolios for Digital Identity Development, Career Management, and Lifelong Learning. In this session, you will learn the process and products to create an ePortfolio, adult learning principles related to ePortfolios, free apps and tools to support ePortfolios. And your presenters are myself and Karen Caldwell. Karen Caldwell is my advisor, my friend, my professor, mentor, and now a colleague as we are collaborating on this presentation together. Go ahead, Karen. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen, and I'm also the president of the Jill Benedict Fan Club. It's a um, Canada chapter, and I'm an instructor at SUNY Potsdam and also someone who has used ePortfolios myself uh, for my own purposes. So um, we hope you enjoy the presentation and gain a lot of um, helpful learning from it as well. Thank you, Karen. So me, I am Jill Benedict. So a little bit about me. In 2001, I graduated from SUNY Potsdam with a, a bachelor's in sociology. And then in 2003, I began my career in gaming as hired as a compliance officer. Throughout the years as uh, my career, I was uh, promoted and transferred and eventually I became the director of compliance. In 2018, I applied and I landed my dream job as the executive director for the St. Regis Mohawk Tribal Gaming Commission. So what the Gaming Commission do does is basically regulates gaming activities at the casino. So then in 2021, I was 45 years old and I decided I wanted to go back to school and I enrolled in the Masters of Organizational Development with SUNY Potsdam. So about my third semester, I was given an assignment to create an e-portfolio um, as a final project. I had absolutely no idea what an e-portfolio does. So I had to do some research along with um, any information that was uh, uh, related to the class. So an ePortfolio is a digital space uh, to showcase your skills, creativity, career competencies, your interests, your volunteer work, passions, basically anything, uh, any kind of visible activity uh, about you that you would want to display. It is also a coherent digital package with a giant amount of information. So what should you include in your ePortfolio? Well, for the assignment, the required content were, was a landing page about me, course content, resource slash recommendations or resources related to the course, contact information, career competencies, competencies, competencies. or to showcase lived in experiences. And this could even include um, your volunteer work uh, or if you're in a sporting activity. What should you include? You should include navigation bar or bars pictures, infographics, websites, charts, introductions, and of course, references. Now, where do you start? Where I started was with the uh, digital expert, Renee Hobbs's communication strategy for digital media. So number one being, who am I? And of course, you have to answer all of these questions prior to even thinking about your e-portfolio. So again, number one, who am I? Your this is basically your digital identity for your e-portfolio. It could be you, present day, or future you. Um, and it could even be who you are personally or professionally or both. Number two, who is my target audience? Who do you want to share your e-portfolio with? Is it your students, your employees, or clients and colleagues? Three, how will they encounter your message? Some examples are in an email, in an RFP, if you're using it for business related, in a cover letter, maybe in your LinkedIn account or other social media, or a, a link to another, um, from another website. Four, what do you want to them to know? And of course, you want them to know about course content, but specifically what course content do you want them to know? Um, you don't have to use every single bit of course content. You want to be very specific and think about who your audience is and also who you are in your e-portfolio when you're making those decisions on what content to include. Five, how do you want to make them feel? This is really important when thinking about your, your content, providing the wrong information to the wrong audience. So it's really important when you're thinking about your content and your audience, how do you want them to feel? And then, of course, 
Number six, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to seek additional information? Do you want them to be a potential client? Or are you just looking for it to do an assignment uh, for a class? So what did I do to accomplish this? First off, I created an e-portfolio called Benedict Consulting. Um, I was bringing together all of the requirements that were in uh, the assignment, plus I was thinking about this communication strategy, and this is where I created Benedict Consulting. So if you notice that the, the name of the company is on the landing page, and hello and welcome, I want the, the audience to feel welcomed by the words, but also by the picture that's included behind in the background. I want to include uh, Benedict Consulting on the header, and then also this header is also interactive. It also brings you back to the, to the landing page anytime you, you hover and click on it. I also wanted to include a navigation bar with the ability to see everything on the page, and it also to be um, easy basically for uh, the audience to navigate through there. And it's basically thinking about your landing page is an introduction to your e-portfolio. Next, I wanted to, to include pictures and information about me. So about me, I am the CEO and founder of Benedict Consulting. I wanted to include my career competencies. I have 23 years in tribal gaming experience as a leader and also a regulator. I also included my qualifications, uh, my certifications, and also any of my, my degrees. And one last thing I wanted to include about myself that I am a member of the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe. So my e-portfolio includes my two passions, tribal gaming and leadership. So as far as the tribal gaming element is concerned, I wanted to include that I'm a member of the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe and I share my clients' concerns with trial so sovereignty, self-government, self-determination, and of course, culture. I also included a picture of myself because I want the audience to be familiar with my face, um, creating a trust and creating um, some enticement to want and more information about me and about Benedict Consultant. Next, I included introductions and videos. Uh, first off, this is about intersectionality and I included a video from ADP. Um, this is a, a, an embedded video where the person could hover over this and click and they would be able to play the video right inside the website. I bolded intersectionality so that way you're moving the viewer's eye to the next section. And then also I included an introduction. I wanted to orientate the audience with each section um, so they know what to expect. They know what to expect when they are clicking on that video if they are interested in it. Next, I included charts. As part of our leadership content, we were asked to do a survey to our friends and colleagues and family about our leadership um, responsibilities, our leadership content about ourselves. So what I did with that information is I put it into a spreadsheet and I created this chart and I orientated that information to uh, the website and to the audience, um, creating an illusion that, hey, we surveyed our clients and this is what they thought about us. Um, also, I included a little bit of an introduction in, in bullets to highlight what areas of the of the the chart that I felt that the audience would enjoy. Also, I included infographics for this particular leadership content, leadership effectiveness. There are four subcategories: individual, interpersonal, societal, and organizational. I included an infographic in the middle from how to promote leadership effectiveness, and then also the four contents around it, surrounding it. I also included a, a header in bold to direct the reader's eyes. And I also bolded each sub content. So that way, again, showing the importance of the sub contents and then also introducing each sub content. I also included an abundance of information on how to contact for Benedict Consulting. So these buttons are interactive and this, uh, this bottom part that is on each, um, each page of the e-portfolio, um, it identifies who the company is, my email address, and then also my office phone number. I also included interactive buttons on the company Facebook, our LinkedIn page, and then also our Twitter. And then I also included a mailing address and again, phone number here to the office. And I, I again, I, I, uh, in my e-portfolio, I flooded ways how to contact me.
And then next, I also included websites. So this particular one is about the double bind. Again, it, the, the section is bolded to guide the audience's eye to, the, to each section. I also included another introduction to exactly what the double bind is and including bullet points. So uh, that way I'm not providing too much information, but just the amount of right information um, to let the audience know what to expect with this website. So the pictures and then also the link down here are interactive. So if the viewer were to hover over the picture and also this link and click on it, another window would open up and then they would be able to read this article about the double blind. Next, I also included course content, not only on the leadership tab, but I also included course content throughout the website. For this particular example, this is on the meet our team tab. Um, I included, am I leading a group or a team and a video with the same process, just basically hover over the video and then clicking play, and then they could watch the, um, the video inside the website. And I also included information about what to expect with a team or a group and a small introduction. So again, you don't have to put your course content and limiting it just to the, the course content page, but you can also Im improvise and put it in every single part of your e-portfolio. Next, I included course references. Again, this is uh, the, the folder, which includes my contact information and the company name, but also right here is course references. So if you click on this button, it will take you to this tab, which is references. Also, also some helpful hints about uh, developing your reference list. Put it in Excel because when you put the references in Excel, it's more easy, it's easy to um, filter it by alphabetical order. And then that way you could just uh, copy and paste the, the table right into uh, your e-portfolio. It just makes life a, a lot easier. But also having access to any of the work uh, from other, from writers, researchers, or whoever um, in the e-portfolio and having easy access in case your audience wants to learn more about that. So going back to my communication strategy, who am I? I am Benedict Consulting with many years of professional experience, and the CEO and co-founder is Jill Benedict. Who is my target audience? My target audience is potential and current clients of Benedict Consulting seeking information about our company. How do I want them to occur uh, and encounter the message? I plan to share my ePortfolio website with potential clients through an email or a cover letter. What do I want them to know? I want them to know about me, uh, the experience of my company and my coworkers and my employees, uh, my education, our qualifications, and of course, our passion for leadership and tribal gaming. Five, what do I want them to feel? I want them to relate to me and I want to gain their trust as a client or a potential client. What do I want them to do? I want them to contact me um, I've given them many interactive buttons and information on how to do so. So, uh, but that's what I want them to do is I want them to contact me and be a potential client. <clears throat> so I've talked about what things you should include. So what things should you not include? Um, so when I first started with my leadership content uh, back in my first semester, um, I was given a similar assignment and I would use PowerPoints. I was really good at using PowerPoints. However, with the leadership content or the course content that I was using, I was at about a 200 page PowerPoint and I was losing my audience. It was not interactive. Um, so again, it wasn't the co coherent digital package that an e-portfolio should be. And again, it was not easy to navigate through. I was losing a lot of my audience throughout this 200 page PowerPoint. Um, and then also uh, make it yours. If you're using a template, ensure you add your own personal touches. And then also, and this is my recommendation, but don't say that this is an assignment. You might lose your audience if they know that this is an assignment. Um, it's really up to you if you want to include that, that you are doing this part of a class, but I would stay away from that. So that way you do have the opportunity to use your e-portfolio for future use. And then next, Karen's going to explain the feed forward concept as part of uh, this process. So you 
probably have noticed that Jill made a lot of decisions along the way about what to include, what not to include, and certain features and characteristics of her e-portfolio. And part of that came from an activity where students give each other feedback, which we have since changed into the concept of feed forward. And you can achieve that as well by using a feed forward approach and the RAP framework from Joe Hirsch. And I'm just going to briefly illustrate and explain what that would look like for an e-portfolio assignment within a class. And even if you do this in the workplace and have your colleagues do this, you can use this framework for any number of evaluations or critiques uh, with this structure. So the RAP framework stands for what, the reason, the affect or emotion, and to prompt creativity. So as an example, what you probably noticed with Jill's final version of her e-portfolio is that she had loads of citations. But let's imagine that when you evaluate another person's e-portfolio, you don't see any of that. So you could use the RAP framework to give them input on why it's important. So the W, what and where, would be the growth area. And that would primarily be the lack of citations or references. So the R of the RAP framework is the reason. Why is that important? So what? Why does it matter? And of course, when you're sharing anything publicly, you want people to trust you and to see your work as quality. And that means using evidence-informed content that is woven into your own perception and your own take on it. So you would share that in the feedback and say it matters because you have put together a lot of great content from other resources, as well as your own take on it. You've synthesized it, but it doesn't appear to be that way to your audience. And that takes us to the A or affect, which is the emotional response. And as Jill really um, illustrated well with her communication strategy, you're also thinking about your audience and the emotion, what you want them to feel when they look at your e-portfolio. So the effect, of course, is like, oh, really, this is all your opinion. Hmm. Maybe I won't stick around for long because I'm looking for evidence-informed information that comes from this professional with lived experience, but also from research and best practice and other sources. So that's the emotional impact of your audience in the feedback I would give that person. Finally, the P is the most um, forward-looking side of feed forward. You're giving your peer actionable steps to address their growth area. So if I were to prompt creativity with my peer, I would say, Go back to your content and just identify all of the information that is not your own and simply add a source. You already have that information, especially if you use a, a trick like Jill suggested and using an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of all your resources. But that would be how I prompt creativity is saying, go back and simply edit your content to demonstrate that you are combining your own lived experience, your take on things, um, as well as evidence-informed content. So that's it for Feed Forward. That's an activity you can use in the classroom, but also if you just decide to create an e-portfolio, you can ask others to give you input using this RAP framework. Back to you, Jill. Thanks, Karen. So I found uh, the feedback that I received or Feed Forward that I received from uh, my colleagues, which would be my classmates, super important. Um, they showed me direction on language, especially thinking about my target audience. They uh, showed me where all my typos were. And also they gave me feedback on how to do resources, make resources much easier um, in the e-portfolio. And um, I just find that feedback is so important. And then also, if you have some family and friends that you want to forward your e-portfolio to get further um, to get further feedback, that, that is a great idea. So back to my ePortfolio and how did I choose the final product? Basically, here's some tips and tricks on what to think about that is do your research. Um, I got onto uh, Google and I did a, a free, I did a free app search and I watched some videos. I looked at templates. I looked at some tutorials and I also got inspired by looking at other people's e-portfolios. Karen provides lots of examples on other people's e-portfolios, but if you just do a quick Google search, they will 
give you some great examples for e-portfolios, not only from students, but also professionals. And then also, does your format meet your communication strategy? Think about all of the six questions that you just answered and look at your format and does that meet your communication strategy? So I chose Google Sites. I chose it because it was very simple to use. I could embed information from my Google Drive into my Google Site. <clears throat> There's also lots of tutorials on how to do shortcuts um, and just basically how to manage your e-portfolio or your website through Google Sites. And then also you don't have to rely solely on Google Sites on how to use it, but you can also go to YouTube on helpful tips and tricks. Um, so next we have is more information about ePortfolio. So if you want to take a quick snapshot with your phone of this um, QR code, and it will lead you to an infographic. So the infographic is going to show you some helpful websites for infographics or eBooks, such as Google Sites, and it will take you directly to there. It also has some helpful hints. Um, with the uh, feed forward concept and then also the communication strategy concept. It's going to offer some tips and tricks on some easy things, how to um, complete an e-portfolio. It's going to also provide uh, two links. One is a helpful website from Karen about e-portfolios and in in instruct for instructors as well. And then to my e-portfolio. So hopefully you can get inspired. And then our contact information, mine and Karen's contact information. Next, Karen is going to be talking about some adult learning concepts and how they relate to e-portfolios. Great. Thanks, Jill. If you could move to the next screen, I can go over the two main concepts related to adult learning, which are agency and deep learning. So adult learners especially seek agency or autonomy over their learning. And we also all can benefit from creating an e-portfolio as part of our own lifelong learning approach. So the learning theory that brings those two concepts together, agency and deep learning, is called generative learning from Fiorella and Mayer. So generative learning consists of three main steps, select, organize, and integrate, or SOI. So of course, you can imagine that taking the steps of selecting content requires focus and purpose. And that is what Jill demonstrated with the communication strategy and what she mentioned earlier about stopping and thinking about why you're doing it. Creating an e-portfolio should serve your purpose and your intent and your goals in future. So that's where you start at the beginning is thinking about your purpose and then selecting content based on your purpose. The next step is to organize content. And this is where you really keep your audience in mind. But notice the two or the words on the screen there next to organize. To organize content, you have to compare it with what you already know or with other concepts. You contrast it with concepts that you think your audience may already know, and you synthesize. You're bringing together your own lived experience, your professional experience, and then content from evidence um, that's through research and other high quality sources. And then you're connecting. You're thinking about your own background knowledge as well as your audience's knowledge. And that organization phase is also, of course, directly linked to deep learning, but also autonomy and agency. You are making those decisions about what to include and how to include it by organizing it in this way. The last step is to integrate. And this is where you're really connecting with your own prior knowledge and you're adding to it by consistently synthesizing new information or looking at it in a different way. You're also thinking about the public concepts and how you can best communicate these concepts and to your audience and just the general public, because of course, an e-portfolio can and should be public. So that um, captures the generative learning approach, really captures the two essential elements for adult learners of agency and having control of your own learning and deep learning. And especially in the 21st century, we have so much information coming our way. Even if you're not enrolled in a course, you have information coming your way the minute you pick up a device or turn on 
the TV or radio. So this is another way to um, structure how you process that input flood or the avalanche of information that you face on a daily basis. So that's it for the adult learning theory and back to you, Jill. Thanks, Karen. So if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to Karen or I. Our contact information is located again on the infographic. And here are our references that we use for this presentation. Thank you very much. And I hope you everybody enjoyed our presentation.